A remarkable press conference yesterday. I didn't go to it because it was in Auckland and I was in Wellington, but the Prime Minister comes out in response to some pretty heavy public media political criticism over crime. Um, and crime has always been a very good rallying cry in the run-up to an election, particularly for an opposition to say a government is soft on crime. The truth is, statistically, you are very unlikely in the middle to upper classes to be affected by crime directly. Uh, criminals tend to come from the lower socioeconomic parts of our society and they tend to prey, well, on each other. On each other. Um, Justice Department research on, on crime suggests it does tend to hap happen to um, poorer people. And, of course, that is not to underestimate its impact. And, of course, when someone dies, as we found in Sandringham earlier this week, that is the greatest impact a crime can have in, on anyone is to rob them of their life. But with ram raids, uh, with dairy raids, with a perception, if not a reality, of lawlessness, the government has had no choice but to respond. You hear this morning Andrew Costa, the Minister of Police, saying our Get Tough on Gangs um, program is going to be extended. And yesterday the government said it would be um, supercharging a fog machine um, program Fog machines used um, to, I, I, I guess, make it impossible for a, a burglar or a robber in a dairy or in a convenience store or any sort of store to carry out their crime because they can't see anything. I think that's the theory behind fog cannons. Um, also, of course, we have the National Party saying boot camps are the way to go. We take young offenders in particular and we put them away in military-style training and for some reason, I don't know, that kicks the crime out of them. Well, if, is any of this going to work? And in the context of New Zealand's history, are we in the middle of a crime wave? Who better to ask than someone who studies crime, a criminologist? And one of the country's uh, leading and best-known criminologist is Greg Newbold, and he joins us now. Greg, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to come on the platform this morning. Uh, good morning, Sean. Yeah, good. No, nice talking to you. All right. Well, we seem to be in, I don't know... A perfect storm of law and order, crime news, and a certain amount of paranoia. Could I first ask you, is this perception or reality? Well, I think it's reality, <clears throat> and as much as we know that the uh, the ram raids on the um, uh, on dairies and supermarkets and uh, shopping malls and so on, we know that they've been increasing. Um, <clears throat> Perhaps they've been, you know, they're saying there's been a drop in the last month, but that doesn't mean anything. They could they could easily increase again next, the following month. Yeah. Um, there's definitely been a, a, a spate of these kinds of things in it. To me, it's <clears throat> largely driven by a perception that uh, among the young people that they're untouchable, which to, to some extent they are. Um, and also <clears throat> by... Um, by the idea that you know that we can video these things become heroes in our own movie so it's become a sort of an epidemic type of thing where it's become trendy and very popular to be a criminal kids. yeah well among the, among kids from from disconnected families a lot of these kids who are doing this aren't going to school which is part of the problem um i i like the act party idea that um that that schools should be reporting their their truancy figures on a daily basis and trying to get the kids back to school because the, the kids who are doing these kinds of things are disconnected from society and part of that disconnection has to do with the fact that they're not going to school. Greg, are you also keen... Are becoming, you, yeah, are you also they're keen... They're becoming feral. You yeah, know, they fer become like feral kids. Wow. Um, my colleague Michael Laws gets such a hard time for using that term, but you've just used it. Feral, wild, yeah. uncontrollable. Um, yeah. Do you also yeah. think parents should be held liable for the non-attendance of their children at school? Yes, I do. I mean, <clears throat> if a dog attacks um, somebody, then the the owner, the person who's responsible for the dog, <clears throat> for the dog, um, uh, takes the rap for it. 
And I think it's the same with parents. I mean, if you're not going to hold the kids responsible for what they're doing, and, and there's a good argument for that because they're a product of their, of their home environment, then, then the people who are responsible for those, those kids have to be held to account, and uh, that's the parents. So I think definitely there, there needs to be some repercussions on the parents of kids who don't go to school and the parents of kids who are out roaming the streets at 3 o'clock in the morning. OK, uh, Greg, I've got to say I'm surprised. That's a fairly hawkish position and there's been uh, criticism of the Act Party from the left, but you're saying that sort of direct measure, and, and it's interesting how you have jumped straight into root causes of the crime wave, uh, and you're saying we need to change the behaviour of those committing the crime or basically what, put a fence at the top of the cliff, cliff rather than an ambulance at the bottom? Yeah, well, there's two solutions. You know, there's the immediate solution, which is, you know, fog cannons or um, uh, dairy owners arming themselves, and which they're going to have to because, I mean, it's going to take a long time for those fog cannons to be to be installed. It's f the, the government should have done that a long time ago. It's taken the death of Janek Patel to... to force them into some action on this, which they should have been taken a long time ago. Um, and then there's the long-term solution, which is the families. Yeah. You know, so you've got the immediate solution, which is deterrence, and then you've got to have the long-term solution, which is um, making families responsible for the, for the, for the children. All right. What about making... Raised. OK. Um, in the case of Janique Patel, though, it is before the courts, our understanding is these were adult offenders... One of them, perhaps a, a 501 um, the deportee from Australia. Yeah. Um, we've seen the problem with the increase in gang numbers and increased violence uh, in gangs, a tougher attitude on the streets. That has been warned about for years since Australia started deporting our finest citizens back to this country. It has swelled the numbers in gangs, increased uh, violence in gangs. Um, being tough on families and truants isn't going to solve that problem, uh, is it, Greg? No, that's not going to be... Uh, that's, that's a different issue, actually. The gangs aren't involved in the get ram raids. Uh, these are the kids... These kids are the possibly future gang members, but the gangs themselves aren't responsible for this thing. So the gangs are a different issue, really. Gang violence is mainly directed at other gangs. It doesn't... Yeah. Normally, gang violence doesn't normally affect the average citizen. The, the gangs will fight with one another because they haven't got police protection. Um, <clears throat> the main thing that gangs are involved with uh, is There's drugs. Yeah, with the drug, the drug thing, and that's a different issue altogether. Yeah. Um, and if, it, and honestly, if the gangs weren't dealing in drugs, <clears throat> the problem wouldn't go away. If the gangs weren't dealing in drugs, someone else would be doing it. All right. Um, I, I like the way you've delineated. Uh, this Greg but I guess the problem is we all want to feel safer and to be honest I feel pretty safe because I know what the statistics are as I go about my life and I'm not running a dairy um, but right yeah, now yeah. we if are I running was a, running it yeah. if, if you, I was running a dairy I wouldn't feel too safe yeah uh, and know, clearly yeah. that protest yesterday uh, indicated they didn't what do you no. think? Let's move on to another policy that's had a lot of ink lately, and that is the boot camp idea. I have been hearing good things about LSV courses, the limited service volunteer courses, as a fence at the top of the cliff, taking kids who are at risk, giving them some structure and some purpose, and I hear it has turned lives around. But overall, do boot camps work as deterrents for these people who you now say it's almost a trend? to be a criminal or a ram, ram raider. Yeah, the, the, um, those deterrent type uh, remedies have, uh, statistically they don't have a high, high degree of success. I actually went to a boot camp myself. I was sent to a boot camp when I was uh, 18 and um, most of the guys I was with um, re-offended, I re-offended. Um, and um, and statistically and internationally, they don't have a great impact. But they can they can 
uh, help some people. And and uh, my cousin actually, no, sorry, my nephew went to the, the LSV, and I, I I attended the passing out parade and was very proud. His mother was crying. It was it was a lovely moment to see these young fellows. Um, um, marching around and um, and and uh, acting in a very disciplined way, but uh, he, he reoffended. But uh, some some of those guys ended up going into the army, and right. uh, so that that would have been a good thing for them, you know. Yeah. Especially the young Maori boys, you know, they they love it. They love that kind of discipline. The young Maori fellows, yeah, young Maori fellows, and they they were shining. And several of them, they, they I mean, they were given the opportunity of joining the army after it. They said, "Right, oh, who, who wants?" And several put their hands up and and went into the army. So I think it, I think the that that national party policy does have some value in that it can help some people. Um, and also, I mean, the government you have to, the government has to be seen to be doing something. There have to be consequences. You know, the public needs to be reassured that there are going to be consequences to these people. Not, um, you know, arrest them and let them out and then they're back on the streets doing the same thing the next night. And, you know, giving the fingers to, to, to society. There has to be some consequences and the public needs to have a, a sense of security and a sense of, um, of confidence that when young people do these kinds of things, that there will be consequences for them. Uh, Greg, uh, the other thing we've... important function of law, you know. Yeah. In an even yeah. broader context, we have, we are told, a recession on the way. Yeah. Um, and whatever that means economically, it means tougher times for a lot of uh, Kiwis. What do we yep. expect to happen to crime rates in a recession? Normally in economic, tough economic times, crime rates go up. Right. That's the general rule, but... Um, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship. There are okay. a lot of other factors which... But that is another primary. pressure on to create lawlessness that we have, we are dealing with right now then. Yeah, it is another. It will be another factor. And uh, we may not see an increase in crime, but because, as I say, there are other, other factors involved, but uh, it, is, it definitely is an aggravating factor where crime's concerned. Yeah. Uh, Greg, well, we've talked about the National Party's boot camp policy. The government seems to be, though there is some confusion whether or not they have pre-ordered any fog cannons, the fog cannon seems to be the technological answer to uh, retail crime or to preventing retail crime. Have you seen any figures on, on fog cannon and exactly what they do and if they do bloody work? No, I haven't. But what I do know is that <clears throat> the greatest deterrent to this type of crime is certainty of failure or certainty of detection. Ah. So that if prospective offenders know that there's a high likelihood of failure, then they won't be doing it. It's only when they've got a, a confidence that they'll get away with it that they're, <clears throat> that they're encouraged to, um, you know, go out and... and uh, and, and, and commit and, the crime. And, 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 yeah, and do it. And, you know, and a fog, a fog video, cannon and video sign. Them, and, yeah, a fog video cannon. Video themselves being heroes and all that. Yeah. And a fog cannon is a deterrent to that, I guess. Yes, I think it is. Um, that's, it's one deterrent. All right. Um, but, but not I, a total solution. I don't think it's a total solution. I, I, if I was a, honestly, if I was a dairy owner, I'd be, I'd be taking things into my own hands a bit. Jeez, Greg. <laughs> How might you do that? A baseball bat or a cricket bat would be yeah, more comfortable. Well, yeah, a lot of them have got the. Yeah, I'd go probably a bit further than that. But uh, well, because, hang on, I mean, hang on, Greg. Don't just things. drop that in there and walk away. How do you go <laughs> a bit further than that? Oh well, you know, I mean, there, there are other things that you can do as well. I mean, like you can have a bottle, a bottle of ammonia, for example. Um, if you squirt ammonia in someone's face, they get they go. It's like a punch in the nose, you know. But there are other things. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to go into specifics there because... Obviously, because we might be breaking get, the law, Greg. Yeah, that's right. You can be inciting people to break the law. and uh, But you do have to protect yourself, don't you? And, and I, you're I, I saying mean, that... I do, that... even in my own home. I mean, in yeah. my own home, I, I, I've got contingencies here. Have you? you know? 
Why would you? I suppose, Greg, you deal with the criminal classes a bit. You might be more at risk. I don't. Yeah, don't you? I no, don't well, I, well, I, I, I don't I know. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say stuff, but I'm pretty slack about it. If someone wants my stuff, they can come and get it. Oh, I don't yeah, see I a think. point in getting in a physical conversa- confrontation with them. Uh, yeah, well, they can't come around here and do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, I, I live in the in the Western Bay of Flinty now, and, and, and just down the road the other night, uh, a, a, a woman got got burgled in the middle of the night she was in the house and the place was wrecked and they they sprayed obscenities over the um oh. thing she didn't wake up but um see if uh, you've got to um, you've got to be ready for that kind of thing i mean the people who who get you know like stabbed to death by intruders and that a lot of the time it's because they're not ready for it well, I'm just not, not really, prepared. Yeah, yeah I'm not, not prepared, prepared for you know. Children, my, you got me paranoid now. Yeah, well, you know, it can happen to anybody. When it happens, it's going to happen out of the blue. Mm. So you've got to be, you know, you've got to be ready for that kind of thing in case it happens. Uh, yeah. The, the, I mean, the other day, someone in this in this my neighbourhood, <laughs> he was seventy years of age. <laughs> he got a knock on the door, opened the door. <laughs> Someone went and punched him in the face. Yeah, out of the blue, you know, it was just. Yeah. Greg, oh. Greg, you've been a criminologist for a long time. You've you've travelled a bit of a life journey. Yeah, uh, yeah are yeah. we in a new age of lawlessness? Um, at, right at the moment, I think we're having a bit of a spike. I don't, I'm not sure whether it's a new age of law, lawlessness, but we are having a spike, and <clears throat> I think uh, part of the reason, with, with especially with regard to very young offenders, is is the school attendance thing. Yeah. It's a, a real problem. We had discipline at school, you know. I mean, yeah. we got the cane, and I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, but you it. still ended up being a criminal, Greg, and being in prison. So I don't know that it worked, eh? <laughs> well, it, I, I did go to prison, yeah, but, um, I mean, most of my my friends didn't go to prison. And I did go to prison, but I um, didn't go to prison again, you know. I mean, I yeah. didn't. I didn't reoffend. Um, I, I went to you remember. I went to jail in the nineteen seventies at a time when lots and lots of young middle class kids like me were dealing in drugs and going to prison. Yeah, that was the phenomenon of the time. We were all you know, getting into heroin and marijuana and LSD. A lot of us were getting busted and going to jail. Yeah, and that that was that was part of the you know part of the the hippie thing that was going on in the 1970s where lots and lots of young middle class yeah. people were using drugs for the first time and getting busted and going yeah, yeah. And yeah. that. Now that's what happened. Yeah. Greg, have you seen anything the government has done or that opposition parties have proposed and you've said you you like the truancy issue if we're going to get back to basics and nip this stuff in the bud. Mm. Uh, do you see collectively these solutions working so people do feel safer, so that crime does come down, so that you can, or, or dairy workers can feel safe? Yeah, well, they need the, well, there's the fog cannon thing, and uh, I think probably the criminal responsibility needs to be reduced from uh, 17 back to 16. They, they well, put it up to 17 in 2002. I think it needs to be dropped back down to 16 so that kids can be incarcerated um, or put in youth, um, you know, youth yes. units. Yeah. Because I know I've been to the youth units and they, oh man, they, they put a lot of effort into those youth units, teaching the kids, kids who can't read and write, teaching them to read and write, uh, teaching them to uh, uh, you know, get into um into trades, for example, mm. uh, mechanics and that kind of thing. They put a lot of effort into it. And um, they also have high recidivist rates, but nonetheless, there are a few people who will be... Um, yeah, and one um, person... Affected, you keep, yeah. Possibly affected, just just yeah. like the boot camps. A better, better solution to boot camps really would be trade training. Yeah. Um, trade training type um, institutions, you know, where the kids are... Getting getting a skill they can skills, and, and get a job. Jo- useful job skills and yeah. and, uh, and and basic reading and writing because a lot of these kids they can't read and write mm. and that's a real problem illiteracy and numeracy yeah. and uh, and that and that 
alienates them from society and um, and alienated kids tend to go wild. Yeah, or feral. Feral. Yeah, or feral, yeah. yeah. Greg, yeah. so good talking to you. You've got such wisdom. Uh, there isn't a, a silver bullet, a quick fix to this, and it's something we've got to keep talking about. I thank you yeah. for taking part in the conversation with us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. That is uh, criminologist Greg Newbold. Well, I, I was surprised at how hawkish his views were. He says... A lot of this crime, uh, the ram raiding particularly, is kids who have gone feral. Feral. That is a Michael Law's word. Um, kids who have gone feral, they need to stay at school. So he goes, big tick to the anti-truancy measures being suggested by ACT, even though I think I heard the Liberals on Red Radio wringing their hands about that the other day. He says yes to fog cannons, so I think the government's fibbing when it tells you it's pre-ordered a whole lot of fog cannons. Um, a couple of people have rung suppliers of fog cannons and said, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. Um, and the gang thing may be separate. The gangs are mainly dealing drugs. Jeez, uh, yeah, they, they do seem to be different strands of lawlessness. But I think this idea of getting kids to go to school and if your parents are bloody useless and drop kid parents and they can't get to school... Well, I'm sorry, you should go to an institution that makes sure you go to school and your parents should lose the right to parent you. Um, gosh, I didn't get to ask him a, a really good um, plan someone came up with yesterday. In the same way as you make parents responsible for their kids offending, if one person in a gang commits a crime, everyone in that gang should be held accountable for the crime and should be liable to do the time. Wouldn't that clean up the streets quickly? and stop the drug peddlers and the drug purveyors quickly.